All right, so we've continued to work our way along Vincent's line. Uh, as I promised before, we're now basically at his right flank. The monument behind me is to the 16th Michigan. And again, you can see the true positions on the uh, little round top map, which we have provided to you. Uh, behind us, again, you can see Devil's Den further on. And again, maybe just for context, if you pan around towards my left, you can again see the castle to the 44th New York. The rock that I talked about uh, with the carving St. Vincent fell here, you can't see the particular rock right at this moment, at least I can't where I'm standing, but it's basically right to what would be our left of that, of, of that monument. But that would have been the area where he was at. Now fighting along Vincent's line was fierce. And as I said, and we all know, uh, the fighting on Vincent's left in the 20th Main has gotten a lot of scrutiny, but people don't always realize that Vincent's right flank also almost collapsed under pressure as Confederate troops from Texas and then Alabama were coming up this slope and eventually worked around the 16th Michigan's right flag. Um, I have a quote from a, a member of the 4th Texas, Private Val C. Giles of the 4th Texas, uh, who described the character of the fighting here. It might give you a general feel for what this was like. Quote, regiments overlapped each other, and when we reached the woods and climbed the mountains, we were a badly mixed crowd. So you can see formations are breaking down here. Nearly all our officers were gone. Every fellow was his own general. Officers were crossed to the men, and men were equally crossed to the officers. We could hear the Yankee officer on the crest cursing his men out by platoons and, telling, and the men telling him to go to a country not very far from them at that time. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. But anyways, both sides were whipped and all were mad about it. Okay, so everybody's mad here with the fighting and the, the close combat that's going on here. So Alabama troops are coming up and going to kind of try to work around the 16th Michigan's right flank. Now, the 16th Michigan was the smallest regiment in Vincent's brigade, only comprised of about 263 men. They were from the Detroit area and commanded by a man by the name of Lieutenant Colonel Norville Welch. Unfortunately, and there's some, you know, there's some dispute about this, but what seems to have happened is the 16th was under pressure. Welch and much of his regiment seemed to have fallen back up the hill and kind of ceded this ground to the Confederates. In fact, as Welch and the guys were going up the hill, that was probably when Vincent was trying to rally them and was ultimately mortally wounded. So pan the camera this way, give everybody a sense of how close the Confederates are coming to the summit of the hill. And just above where I'm pointing right now, somebody's taking a picture in front of it, but behind it, you can see a memorial to the 140th New York, commanded by Patrick O'Rourke. And it's another one of the great stories of Little Round Top, but as Vincent's right flank was collapsing, Warren, still on the job, sent a message down to the north end of the hill, which landed in the hands of Colonel Patty O'Rourke of the 140th New York, Irish immigrant from the Rochester area, first in his class in West Point in 1861, another a young man with a promising future. But O'Rourke, basically getting the message from Warren, led his troops basically on a charge up over the slope of Little Round Top and down into the base general area where we're standing right now. And with the heroic charge of O'Rourke in the 140th New York, they basically pushed the Confederates back off of this end of the hill and saved Vincent's right flank. As many of you probably know, unfortunately, Colonel O'Rourke uh, did not live to see the success of his charge. Somewhere about where the monument stands today, he was struck in the neck by a bullet and killed. So many of you know the old battlefield legend. We go around, we rub his nose for good luck. People always ask, how is that good luck? The guy got killed. Well, the legend is that when O'Rourke died, he surrendered his luck to the living, to you and me. And that's why you have to rub his nose uh, to get a little bit of it. Don't rub the nose, but that's the story, okay? But the bottom line being O'Rourke in the 140th New York have basically now saved the right flank here while O'Rourke is getting killed and Strong Vincent is being mortally wounded. And I just want to show you a quick 
photo or two from this point. Again, Colonel Patrick O'Rourke, one of the great heroes for the day, Little Round Top. Uh, but another gentleman I just want to point out is this young man here, a private in the 140th New York by the name of John Allen, who was also killed up here on Little Round Top. And Private Allen, if you can get a look at that image, Private Allen is unique because it's 16 years old. He is the youngest identified killed in action here at the Battle of Gettysburg. So he was part of this unit. He was killed up here on Little Round Top, only 16 years old, uh, buried today in the Gettysburg National Cemetery. Uh, but the story has always been that his mother was so heartbroken over his death uh, that every night until she died years later, she would always ask that his letters be read and reread to her every night, uh, like I said, until she died. So, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about officers, generals, Sickles, Longstreet, even guys like Vincent or that. Uh, but of course, the unheralded heroes, men like Private John Allen, uh, too often get forgotten in the story. So like I said, he's in the Gettysburg National Cemetery. Pay Private Allen a visit uh, next time you are here. But that essentially, with the charge here on the right flank and Chamberlain securing the left flank, is more or less going to secure Vincent's spur. More reinforcements, Union reinforcements will come up and secure the summit. But what I think the strategic significance of the fighting on Little Round Top is, is that with the failure to take Little Round Top and the failure, most importantly, to drive in the Union left, what you see during the course of the day is Longstreet's attack continuously now starts to break down into more and more disjointed frontal assaults. And we'll see that at other areas on the field. But I think that's really, in my view, that's the real importance of the successful defense of Little Round Top.